exploration can take place in somewhere halfway around the world uh, that you have to save money for years in order to participate in, or it can be something that's kind of been going on right under your nose all along. As fly anglers, I think it's hardwired into our DNA to explore. When I fly fish, I don't feel isolated, even a place where I'm more secluded, but I feel more connected. It's, it's one of those classic early season trips, right? Where you're like so excited to get out there fishing, but you're not necessarily going because the conditions are optimal. If I hear about a, a little stream near where I live and somebody kind of on the sly gives me a nudge and says, you ever fish this little creek here? You might want to try it. That, that, that's, that really gets my attention. And this is, this is kind of like that, you know? You ever fish the Kootenai for bull trout in the spring? Say what? Sometimes I'm the type of fly fisherman where I'm like, yeah, no, I, oh, I'm here and it's good there. But at the start of the season, I'm not that guy. I want to get out there and be the person to say to my buddies, yeah, the fishing's good now, right? Because you're the, you're the, guy, who's, you're the guy who's done the exploring. And that's the thing, when you're exploring, there has to be a little bit more leeway sometimes as far as, uh, you know what, we might get into a couple, we might get into one, we might get into none, but, but when you're exploring, that's all part of it. So I learned something about Jim today, and that is that uh, that he, I think that he, he was spotting me fish. Like I was feeling really good because I'd hooked a few fish, but then I realized, because then he oh, went on this, this absolute oh. tear. And then, all of a sudden he hooks into this massive bull trout. You know, fish that jump are great because they tell you immediately how big they are. Fish that don't jump are also great because they increase the suspense factor of wondering how big the fish is. Yeah, this is uh, this would be the biggest bull trout I've ever caught, that's for sure. <laughs> if, if I catch them. Once we got him in close enough to see him, it was pretty clear that he was, he was uh, maybe not an exceptional fish for this river, but certainly an exceptional fish for this fisherman. <laughs> okay. This fish get... is 31 to the fork. 31, wow, okay. 31 to the fork. That's a good river fish. It's certainly the biggest bull trout ever I've ever And. He's just been on this, like, one fish after another for probably the last 45 minutes. And I've been catching nothing for the last 45 minutes. So, so I think that what he did was he spotted me because he thought, ah, I'm gonna make sure that I don't kill this, this poor young man's ego right away. I'll let him catch a few fish, and then, and then I'll start trying. Put him back, put him back. Put him back. That beautiful pale salmon pink spots along the side. We fished hard that day, um, and I like I like Jim's phrase, right? Not catching fish, you gotta fish harder. You're always wondering what's around the next bend. You know, should I, should we fish this hole harder? Should we try some more flies? Should we try something different, or, or should we just jet upstream and find another hole that, you know, maybe they're stacked up there, and, uh, you know, exploring and going up channels and trying to find new pools and stuff um, makes it really that much more addictive. You want to feel smart in this game, but I think we're, uh, maybe we're smart because we were persistent, but we were also very fortunate that the conditions were nice and fish were here and fish were cooperating uh, in a nice way for us. So we had a, we had a wonderful day and uh, it really couldn't have turned out better.